We are gonna be talking diesels once again today. More specifically, we're gonna be talking about the mistakes not to make when buying a diesel like I made myself as I have made a few mistakes with this truck. I'm not gonna lie, I've, I didn't know really what I was doing, what I was looking for. And we're gonna get into all that in today's video. So hopefully you guys learned something and don't make the same mistakes I did. This should have been my first red flag is this is the freaking key they gave me when I bought the truck. I didn't even have a real key to the truck. I had this janky homemade key. So I had to go out and get one of these real keys so I could use the remote start and the buttons to unlock and lock the truck like it should have. So my 2011 F3 50 six seven power stroke looks beautiful right looks like it's in great shape looks like everything is in working order well not exactly it's actually semi clapped i wouldn't call it clapped but it's got some things wrong with it and i've already got some of them fixed up when i got this truck about a month month and a half ago when i was looking at it and test driving it i was so overly excited to have this truck and like drive this truck that i looked past some major red flags this truck had and that ended up costing me in the long run starting with number one is the rust okay i looked at it it looked cleaner in pictures when i went to go look at the truck in person there was way more rust than the picture showed um the rocker panels i wouldn't say they're gone but they're getting there the front driver's side fender has a lot more rust than the picture look not visible from like here but if you look down here you can see it's chipping here and flaking and yeah it's rusting here too as you guys can see the door jams are fairly clean this is the rear driver's side not too much rust at all. Driver's side door jam, very little bit of rust. Planning on sanding this down and painting this just to protect it. The passenger rear door is where the bulk of the rust is. Obviously this is completely shot, this is gone. I'm not too sure I'm gonna handle that. I do wanna get this rust out of here though before it gets worse. The passenger side front door, virtually no rust, not too bad. But the major one I looked past because I didn't know what I was looking for was the rust in the bed. Top in here and I'll show you guys. So when I bought this truck, I didn't think to step around in the bed and make sure everything's solid. Well, over here, we're in good shape. It's solid. Over here, pretty good shape, doesn't flex. But you come to this corner here, it's gonna be really hard to pick up on the video, but it's like a sponge right here, like right here specifically. Yeah, you could hear it cracking. That is because it is rusted through right there. And me being a first time diesel owner, especially in the rust belt that I live in, didn't even think about that or didn't even know really that the bed could rust out like that, even though I should have known. And yeah, I have a bed that is rusted out. That is easily a three grand repair right there. Obviously, I haven't done anything about that yet. I'm probably gonna wait till the summer and look for a rust-free bed. That was mistake number one, was I looked past all the rust and didn't check everywhere I should have checked for rust to see if this truck was as solid as it looked. Mistake number two has to deal with the front end and this is what I recently got done and what recently cost me a bunch of freaking money. So when I test drove the truck, I hopped in it right away and I immediately noticed the steering wheel felt loose and something just felt sloppy in the front end. But me being overly excited and just wanting to take the truck home and wanting to own the truck, I looked past it and I thought, oh, it's no big deal. You know, it's probably just like a few things here and there that just need to be tightened up or whatnot, a few things need to be replaced. Well. Come to find out, it was about the entire front end that needed to be replaced. After I test drove it and I still decided to buy it, I obviously went ahead and bought it. That's why it's right here. And on my drive home, I got on the highway and I started to notice the front end was way worse than it seemed on the test drive. There was a lot of creaking, a lot of rattling. And when you hit a bump, you can literally feel in like your foot on the uh, floorboard, just the whole front end shaking and creaking. Like every bump felt brutal. Like I literally thought my truck was gonna fall apart. Took it to my trusted mechanic, the guy that does the work on basically every single one of my vehicles. And had him check over the front end. Well, it comes to find out I got a laundry list of things that need to be fixed on the front end. Tell you guys, fixing these big trucks is not cheap. Nothing on these things is cheap to fix or repair. Let's hop inside the truck and I'll read you guys every single thing that was replaced on the front end. As you guys can see here, I have literally two pages of things that were done in this truck. That's how you know it was bad when you get a two pager. Wait, I don't even know where to start. This is such a long list. I don't know where to start. So I guess I'll just start the top and read down every single thing they did on my truck. Tie rod or end, remove and replace. Tie rod or end, remove and replace. Fix the washer tank hose, funny story. Um, I was driving this home, went to go use the windshield washer fluid and it didn't work. The hose was not hooked up on the bottom. So when I fill up the windshield washer fluid, it all pissed out the bottom. So I had no windshield washer fluid. So obviously I had to get that fixed with winter coming and the salt on the roads and whatnot. Uh, steering wheel okay another funny thing about the steering wheel when i got in the truck for the first time i noticed you could rock the steering wheel back and forth and side to side but me being a dumbass i did not think anything of it because i just wanted to take the truck home i really didn't care what it needed i just wanted the truck 
and yeah the steering wheel the bolt that holds the steering wheel to the steering rack was actually loose to the point where i could move this several inches either way and yeah no good so that got fixed obviously with all the front end work i need an alignment axle track bar ball joint remove and replace axle track bar bushings remove and replace wheel hubs remove and replace Actual shaft assembly remove and replace universal joint remove and replace and universal joint remove and replace so Yeah, basically the whole front end got redone It felt like a literal clapped out truck when I bought it and now that all this work's been done It drives like new. I mean honestly it drives incredible world of a difference like does it feel like the same truck? unfortunately all that work obviously has to come with a price and It was a hefty one all this work that I just listed off that got done on my truck cost me $2,696.72. Yeah, it's a lot of money to fix these trucks. So most definitely mistake number two for me was ignoring the front end work that needed to be done just because I wanted the truck. And I, I beg you guys, if you're going to look at a heavy duty truck like this, if the front end seems a little bit off, do a little more research on it, figure out what's actually wrong with it because it could cost you, like it costed me $2,500 or more to get this fixed. Obviously every truck's gonna be different, but my situation, it ended up costing me $2,600. And yeah, that took a hit on the bank account, not gonna lie. Mistake number three that I made was actually kind of a funny mistake, but nonetheless, a mistake. If you look under the truck, I have a full straight pipe, DPF delete, all that done on the truck. Now when I looked at the truck, I crawled under there to see if it was DPF deleted, whatnot, and obviously it was, but the delete pipe was the jankiest thing I have ever seen in my life. It did not go from like the flange after the down pipe to the flange before the uh, going over the axles. It was just literally, someone just cut the DPF system out and welded in some random pipe in there. So I had like three and a half inch piping from stock up to a four inch, down to three and a half again. And it was like the most ghetto thing I've ever seen in my life. The welds were the most trash welds. Like I've never welded, and I'm pretty sure I could weld better than the welds that were on this truck. So yeah, I was driving my truck one day, just cruising along, enjoying driving the truck. And all of a sudden I hear clunk and a bang and scraping. I look in my rear view mirror and the ghetto DPF delete pipe had fallen off in the middle of the road and the exhaust over my axle was hanging, literally dragging behind my truck. Oh, that was another $500 mistake because I had to go buy a whole new exhaust system. It may have been for the better because now I have a full five inch straight pipe. All my piping is the same, it's all the same size and it looks a lot cleaner and it's not rusted, it's not ghetto. But still, that was a $500 mistake right there. So if you total up all the money I've already spent on getting this truck up to speed, we're over three grand deep into this truck, just fixing little mistakes that couldn't been avoided by not buying this truck or doing a little better research. Long story short, I have made some mistakes buying my first diesel truck and I wanted to share these mistakes with you guys so you guys don't make the same mistakes I did and you guys have a little bit better idea of what to look for. And by no means am I a diesel expert or a heavy duty truck expert. These are just the things I have learned from my first experience buying a truck like this. Special huge thumbs up on today's video if you guys think I'm a dumbass for buying this truck. Comment down below what you guys think of all the issues on my truck and some other things to look out for when buying a heavy duty truck or a diesel truck. If you guys are new here or you've been watching for a while and you're not already subscribed, go ahead and smash that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.